Hey guys, a uh, quick video here going over uh, resistor theory. All right, and I'm not going to talk about a lot of the details. I'm just going to talk about a few applications that uh, that I run into all the time where I'm using resistors and what I really care about when I'm designing a circuit with them. All right, so the first thing is the, I guess it's the symbol. It looks something like that. I'm not an artist, but it's just a big squiggly line. So the second thing that's important to me is the value of the resistor. So when you pick one of these up, and these are through-hole resistors, um, because if you're a hobbyist like me, you're gonna wanna use these with a breadboard so you won't have the uh, the ability to use a surface mount resistor on a breadboard. Anyway, so if you pick one of these things up, you're gonna notice that there's a whole bunch of color bands on them. One of them will be gold or silver. And by the way, I'm talking about the standard resistor, not precision resistors, just standard off the shelf resistors. Uh, one of the bands will be gold or silver. So put that band to your right when you pick it up. So let's just, uh, draw this get that line so pick it up put that one to your right and that would be either gold or silver and then to the left of that band there's going to be three other bands all right here's your whole resistor here and uh, all of those bands represent some number and I'm not going to go through what all those are you can google that on Wikipedia and and figure out what all that is. Some teacher might make you memorize that someday. Um, I still need to look it up all the time. So this resistor I have right here is uh, red, um, brown, no, it's black. Red, black, red, black. Wait a second. No, it's not, sorry. This one is Brown, that's what I thought. Brown, black, red. Okay, so we have brown, black, red, and then a gold band. I happen to know that brown is equal to one, black is equal to zero, and red is equal to two. All right, so this is how it works. The first, uh, the first uh, color band gives you the first number in the value, so this would be a one. The second band gives you the next value, which would be a zero. Um, and in some cases, it gets kind of goofy if those bands are like gold or silver. Then we go into one, zero, and then we get into the multiplier band. And since it's a red, that's a two multiplier, um, or it gives us two zeros. Okay, so two gives us two zeros like that. So we have a thousand ohm resistor here. And then the gold or silver band gives us the tolerance. Gold, I believe, is 5%. So that would be plus minus 5% on this value. So we have a thousand ohm resistor or a 1K. And I might make a video about scientific notation. All right, so we have the value. 1K ohm resistor. How do these things work uh, when you have a couple of them together? So if you had a circuit like that with two 1Ks in series like this, the resistance adds up. So I could replace that with a 2K. Okay, pretty simple. Things get a little bit more complicated when you have, uh, let's say, some crazy circuit like this where you have a bunch of resistors in parallel with each other. You have to use some equa some equation, and you just Google that. I'm not going to go over that because I never see it, so I don't care about it. But a little trick here. When you have two resistors that are the same, so if we have two 1Ks like this, it's exactly half of that resistance. So two 1Ks, my value is a 1K, divide that by two, gives me 500. So the equivalent circuit to this would be 500 ohms, right? Now 1K is equal to 1,000. So 1,000 divided by two gives us 500. And you can keep going with this. So let's say you wanted to get a 250 ohm resistor. 
then just put four of these in parallel with each other, okay? And you can get it down to 250 ohms, you know, just keep going and going, all right? And basically what I'm getting at is that you don't need to go out and buy a million different types of resistors. You can pretty much make any resistor you need by doing this. All right, so that's the first thing. Uh, now we can get into a few applications where you might use resistors. The first one I'm thinking of is uh, current limiting resistors. Uh, the best application I can think of for that is when you have an LED circuit and you need to limit the current because an LED has two things. It's got its forward, va forward voltage, which is usually, I don't know, two volts. It's got its forward current that it must operate at, otherwise it'll blow up. And that one's 20 milliamps, I'm just guessing. It's a typical thing. And then you've got your input voltage here going to the resistor. And this is the current limiting resistor here, and this would be ground. Or we could just bring it back to the 5 volt source. So you've got to limit the, the, uh, the current through this circuit somehow with a resistor. So you've got 5 volts here, reference the ground, and you've got 2 volts here to ground. And then you just go 5 minus 2 gives you 3 volts. You've got 20 milliamps going through it since it's a series circuit. So you just take 3 divided by 20 milliamps, and then that gives you the resistor you need to use. Okay. So that's a current limiting application. Ah, Let's talk a little bit about pull-up and pull-down resistors. Here's your uh, microcontroller over here. It could be anything, it could be an Arduino, PIC, AVR, TI, blah, 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 whatever. But it's got some high impedance input, and we'll get into what that means in a second. And you've got a, a, a button, push button, that goes to ground. I'm trying to make a ground symbol there. So when you push the button, this input, when we're looking at it, goes low. But what happens when the button is open like this? We don't know what the input could be. It could be noise, it could be, because this could be an antenna. You might get a capacitive touch type of an effect on that pin. So, and because this is high impedance, this is basically like nothing is connected there. That's what high impedance input is basically is. So what the pull-up resistor does is you connect a resistor right here and bring it up to five volts or whatever the voltage of the microcontroller is. That way, when the button is open, the microcontroller will see five volts on it. Okay, there's no current through here, or barely any at all, so you get five volts, right? Ohm's law. If there's no current, this voltage is equal to this voltage. All right, so anyway, five volts, five volts. When you push the button in, then this completes this circuit here, now you do get current, but since this is just a bare wire here, basically, this goes to zero, and the microcontroller measures zero volts, okay? Now, when this circuit is completed, you wanna make sure that you pick a value of resistance here that you're not dumping a ton of power through this resistor. So we usually pick a 10K or a 1K or whatever. You don't wanna pick a resistor too high, but you know, somewhere in the one to 10K range is pretty good. So that's a pull up resistor. Pull down resistor is basically the same thing. Uh, this would go to five volts here. Pull down resistor goes down. Now these are more commonly used because when you're looking at a microcontroller, you always think that the high signal is like your enable signal. Like you're always checking for something when it goes high. And then this is that case. So the pull down resistor is when the button's open, you're measuring zero volts. When you push the button, the signal goes high here and you complete this circuit, okay? That's a pull up resistor, or pull down resistor, sorry. And that's both of them. Let's see, what else do I use resistors for? Uh, I use them all of the time for voltage divider circuits. So I've got five volts on my board. I need 3.3 I need volts. All right, here's a grid case for that. Got, let me do that again. We've got two resistors here. We've got five volts, 
ground down here, we've got R, we're gonna call it RA and RB. And there's cheat sheets for this too, you know, when you wanna do a voltage divider circuit. RA and RB, and this will be 3.3 .3 volts. So these two resistors in combination will drop my voltage down to 3.3 .3 volts down here. Um, just as a quick theory note here to actually do this, let's see, the current through here would equal five volts divided by the sum of RA plus RB. So five volts divided by RA plus RB is also equal, see the, the current through RA should equal the current through RB, so 3.3 .3 volts here divided by RB should equal this current. So 3.3 .3 volts divided by RB. Now I'll do a little bit of uh, algebra and work your way back and calculate what RA or RB should equal to. And uh, what, so with this, what's nice about this is you can actually pick one of them first and then sort of work your way until you find a nice combination of RA and B to give you your 3.3 .3 volts. Now, depending on what you're loading down out here, um, that will add some resistance in, some load to that. And that, in parallel with RB, is going to throw off your voltage. So RA and RB should be relatively low resistance values compared to whatever your load is. So if this is a 10K out here, or whatever you're loading, don't make RB a 10K. Okay, It should be more like a 1K, or even lower than that, if that makes sense. Uh, instead of doing that or worrying about that, a lot of people will bring this right into a buffer circuit. That way this is high impedance and it buffers the signal up. So if you've got 3.3 .3 volts here, you'll get 3.3 .3 volts out. A uh, buffer circuit would be a voltage follower. Okay. So something like this where you're bringing it back into the circuit like that okay all right anyway voltage divider circuit ah now we're going to talk a little bit about when you buy these resistors what are you looking for um, you're also going to want to look at power so you've got uh, two voltages across the resistor what's the difference of them would be your v diff okay and so that's the same as if you took a meter and measured the voltage right across your resistor what would you get you'd get v diff or if you had a common point in your circuit you'd measure this voltage then you'd measure this voltage subtract them and you get v diff take that v diff divide it by the value of resistor you want to use say a 1k that'll give you your current so now you have current and you have voltage, so you can calculate power. V diff times I current gives you your power. And then that will determine what size resistor you're going to get, because you can get these in all kinds of packages. Quarter watt, eighth watt, half watt, one watt, two watt, blah, blah, blah. It goes on forever. So knowing that, what resistors do I buy? I always buy quarter watt resistors because the leads bend very nicely and they fit into the breadboard and they don't get all mangled up, you know, goofy. I hate that in your circuit when you're plugging them into the breadboard. The quarter watt resistors seem to work best with breadboards. And so what I would recommend getting though is a sample pack of resistors with all different kinds of values and then get a ton of 1Ks Look how many 1Ks I got. That's all 1Ks. A whole bunch of 10Ks, 100Ks, and just, so just keep it uh, logarithmic. So get a bunch of 10 ohms, get a bunch of 100 ohms, get a bunch of 1Ks, get, you know, just get a ton of 1Ks because you can make pretty much any other resistor you'll use with 1K. Get a bunch of 10Ks, 100Ks, and then get a few 1 mega ohms even get a few 10 mega ohms okay and then you'd be set up pretty good with resistors in fact if you wanted to skip all the steps just get a big bag of 1k's and you'll be fine like I told you that resistor with the LED here I use a 1k in all my LED circuits 
And if you want to go even broader, use two 1Ks in series. That'll give you 500 ohms. That's just as close as 300 ohms when you're actually thinking about it. So anyways, that is the video on resistors. When I first made this or had this idea, I was going to keep these videos down to a minute in length. Oh, well.